I'm going to talk about music, but not the entertaining music that uh, you are always accustomed to, because in case of uh, normal entertaining music, there are certain fundamental rules which you can follow, and you can create beautiful music. So we know the rules. We know the grammar, how we can make a music very beautiful to listen to. There has been extensive amount of research which is done to, to make uh, a grammar, a set of rules to convert a bad music into a good music. But my research for the last 15 years has been to understand the music of nature. How materials produces music, because I believe that consciousness is nothing but manifestation of music. How? Before I came here, um, my head was just blank. I didn't construct the sentence, first sentence that I'm going to say to you. But when I say to you, I take a few seconds to construct my sentences. It goes to your brain, and those tiny little poor neurons, they have a time limit, a few kilohertz or a few milliseconds. They have an upper time limit and lower time, time limit. But to process that information in your brain, which you never heard before, you were never prepared to, the proteins inside that neuron needs to fire every microseconds. That means megahertz speed. It's a very, very faster clock. And to do that, your ion channels need to open, and several hundreds of Conformations needs to switch the protein for several nanoseconds. That means gigahertz speed. That means billionth of a second it is doing that. And for that to happen, there are some other processes which takes place even millionth and billionth of a second. Can you imagine when you are listening to me, your brain is clocking in all these layers, and it has to be simultaneous. If not, you cannot get entire information of mine. That means there has to be a clock. There has to be a lowest resolution, time resolution of that clock. And you enter into that clock, you find another clock, which is much faster. And you enter inside, you find another clock, which is much faster. And the journey continues. What I have tried to do is to measure the biological material and understand how this particular musical vibrations is created, image it, and try to create some artificial material so that I can confirm that what I have learned about the music of the materials is a true. So, uh, when I say that um, we go inside the clock and inside the clock and inside the clock, what I basically want to say is that this is the slowest time that you can perceive. That is few seconds. But you can go inside the clock, inside the clock, inside the clock at a very small, fast level. And you can come back and perceive as if no time has passed. So it is all about time, maintaining time. And if you are here, you will say that no time has passed. So it is imaginary. So we need the concept of imaginary space and time, which comes from where we don't know. We just feel it, perceive it. And how we try to imagine our biological system or the entire universe? So entire biological body could be like this. At a time, you see only the purple color ball. You go inside you find a couple of others. You go inside, you find a couple of others. And in this way, we picturize it. So, if the time is passing through in this spiral pathway, then the fastest time to the slowest time, everything you perceive at once. For an example, every 14 days, your um, skin cells get replaced. In 17 months, you get a new kidney. In two years, you get the whole bones. And in 50 years, 50% 50 of your cells, heart cells get replaced. That means in 100 years, you get a new heart. 
So the cycles are continuously running. And not only that, every each one of you are coupled to the, what is happening in the solar system and others. What is the proof? I've just come from India to here. And still, it is um, nighttime over there. I'm feeling sleepy. So that means the circadian rhythm, circadian clock, has connected me with the solar system. So in this way, we are connected to the astrophysical events that are happening. And that is, that's why I say clock inside a clock inside a clock. So it's a network of clock that is connecting everything. And you have to simultaneously perceive the entire thing. That's the beauty of it. So if we want to understand how this is going to happen, uh, these are some of the proteins. And we have taken the real image, how it plays the music. When with a particular set of frequency it vibrates, we can check. So these are the quantum images of the proteins when it is vibrating. So you can think of protein-like a structure, and it is vibrating. And by through vibration, it processes the music at, say, gigahertz scale. And that transcends into megahertz scale, that into hertz scale. And then you can perceive it. And these are the microtubules that is everywhere in every single cell of yours, and plants, and every living, living system that you can see. And they also play the music with a particular set of frequencies, and we can image quantum mechanically how, when it plays the music, how it looks like. You can see the patterns. These are the patterns is continuously being created in every single cell of your body at every single moment you are alive. And these are another set of proteins. They are, can you see this is just like a musical string, and it is vibrating, but this is a quantum mechanical picture of the tiny protein structures that is enabling you to think, enabling you to feel, enabling you to understand what I'm talking about. And this is how it is vibrating and changing pattern. This is when, when you are thinking, uh, thinking or processing about your memory, every single protein is, is coordinating with each other. And one of the prominent of them is anchor in G. And it is how it plays music, beta spectrum. So in this way, we changed, we understood that entire biological system, there is a network of vibrations by which every single biological materials and processes are governed. So we put a lot of neurons side by side, and we, we saw that they are playing music with each other. They are changing the pattern. This is reflection of the music. And every single material has a set of vibrations like this. And it is enc encapsulated by another material with vibrations like this. And this way, the entire chain is created from protein to your entire brain, and brain to body, body to universe. Every single thing is connected through a chain of vibrations. So we say it like this. So this is the kind of chain of vibrations or musical notes, which is composed, which vibrates to create the feelings that you every time you experience. So I uh, finish my presentation here, where the biological systems were. Finally, I would like to end my presentation with two results, that if I understand the nature correctly, because you know that clock inside a clock inside a clock is a very controversial proposal, because I challenge the very foundation, the way biology is taught to in our textbook that is mechanical. And we created molecules which capture heartbeats and other kind of rhythms. And this matters. Capture these rhythms, and you can, it converts to a new material in the solution. And that rhythms we can read. And in this way, we can create many, many different structures. I would like to end my presentation here with this particular structure that we have chemically created. If you think every single, even your DNA is a spiral. If you think solar system, sun is moving through, all the planets are going through, spiral. So it's a spiral, and protein is a sphere. Spiral sphere, spiral sphere, spiral sphere that you can find everywhere in the universe. Even the galactic systems are spiral. 
So we created it chemically in the laboratory, sphere spiral, sphere spiral, sphere spiral. In this way, we have created a large number of structures which you find in a large, large scale by understanding the music in a true sense. Thank you very much. So, Anirban, uh, the word universe suggests a symphony. Yeah. Our biological rhythms, circadian rhythms, but you know, again, in the Ayurveda, there are seasonal rhythms, yes. there are lunar rhythms, yeah. there are tidal rhythms. Yes. So this is music within music. Yes. And our biological system is dancing to this music even though we can't name the tune. Yes. Right? And yes, absolutely. And uh, the important part is rhythm inside a rhythm. So it is not series of rhythms. One rhythm is incorporated inside. So, so a practical application is uh, for disease states is yes. find the resonance and Restore Find, the rhythm. Yes. So all disease, we believe, is about loss of rhythms, loss of vibrations, because that um, disrupts the system. And if we can put a person inside a cage with the right side of rhythms pumping on them, <laughs> maybe we will be able to regenerate the rhythms inside the body. It's very Pythagorean, too. Pythagoras, right? Let it be so. Right. Okay. <laughs> I just why, why, why don't you stay here for Stuart's uh, uh, presentation and maybe we can have some interaction. Okay. I, I, I just want folks to check out your lab page. I've been looking at it on the web. Hmm. Uh, this really would stretch. I mean, I just love the first paragraph. A tree never goes to school but performs particularly advanced supercomputing in its leaves. So does our brain without a single logic gate. Ants in the soil, birds in the sky do not use brain central control processing, but still develop intelligence. Therefore, lots of idiots can develop massive intelligence working together, or massive parallel operations can generate intelligence in a single control unit. I just want to say that's a really cool paragraph. I was, I, I was, I was just a student at that point of time when I wrote this website. You know, I it, just it showed it showed promise. But just so you know, uh, Anirban measures resonance in atoms, nanotechnology, in molecules, in neurons, and entire brain. So that's his work at MIT right now. Thank you. Please take a seat. Thank you, Anirban. <laughs>